Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today we're graced with the presence of Jamie Clements, the CEO and President of the Museum Foundation of New Mexico. Welcome. Thank you, Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get you in here for a long time so we could talk about all the great things that are happening. Oh. Um, the... Let me get all my, my stuff together. So the Museum Foundation, well, we'll let you describe this because you're better okay. at it. Sure. it. It involves four museums, uh, historical sites, right. and other things. Yep. So um, before we do that, tell me a little bit about you, where oh. you're from, okay. and your journey to Santa Fe. Oh, my. So um, I was raised in San Antonio, Texas. First came to Santa Fe in 1961. I was four, brought my parents. <laughs> <laughs> They absolutely fell in love with this place. They bought a little second apartment. We spent every summer here. My father invested in a gallery on Canyon Road called Blair Galleries. Uh, I don't know if you remember Don Blair, what a character. His wife was Bettina Stanky, who was an artist. And so this place has been special and magical to me my whole life. And I was fortunate enough uh, nine years ago to be hired by the Museum of New Mexico Foundation after a 26-year career owning my own business as a fundraising consultant. And so now I get to live where I want to be and to support the museums that are extraordinary. Well, I can definitely uh, vouch for your passion. For, for being here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We've been good friends for a long time. We have. So. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen it. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about the, the foundation. Tell, sure. us, tell us a little bit about the foundation. Sure. So uh, we're in a public-private partnership with the state of New Mexico through the Department of Cultural Affairs in support of the Museum of New Mexico system. Uh, founded in 1909 by Edgar Lee Hewitt. Uh, and it includes the four state museums in Santa Fe. So the art museum downtown, the history museum downtown, including the Palace of the Governors. And then up on Museum Hill, the Museum of International Folk Art and Museum of Indian Arts and Culture. And then there are eight historic sites around the state of New Mexico that we support. Uh, and an Office of Archaeological Studies that's here in Santa Fe, the Center for New Mexico Archaeology. So when you say support, mm -hmm. um, what are you doing to support these museums and yeah. monuments? So, so the state uh, operates the museum. So they staff them. They provide operating funding and capital maintenance. But what they don't fund is programming and that is exhibitions and education and public programs. So we, the foundation, by securing private donations, we fund all of that programming. And we bring about two and a half to three million in dollars, private dollars a year to support the state museum system. Which is well needed. Um, I've been on, serving on the board, currently advisory, but I've been on yep. the board since around 2007. For 100 years. You guys will not let me go. <laughs> we won't ever <laughs> know that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have fun. Um, I love it when we sit down and we, we pick each other's brains. Yep. One of the reasons I wanted to bring you in, uh, besides tell us a little bit about the uh, Museum Foundation of New Mexico, was um, there's some special things happening this year. There and are. Let, let's start with uh, one of my... Um, first and favorite, and that is the Museum of Indian Art and Culture. Yes. Tell us what's going, what's, what's special about that place this year? What's going on? So several things. First is, and the biggest, is the renovation and reopening of Here, Now, and Always. And that first opened in 1997, and it was a groundbreaking exhibit where Native communities were uh, brought into the museum setting to tell their own story. It became a national model for other indigenous uh, cultural institutions around the country. And about eight years ago, when Della Warrior became director of MIAC, uh, she recognized that the exhibit was looking tired. And so together we decided that we were gonna raise the money to renovate it. And it's really more than a renovation, it's a reimagination. We, we absolutely cleared out the old exhibit, started from ground zero. She brought in 60 or 70 consultants from native communities around the Southwest. Uh, and we are 
reopening it uh, the end of June. A public opening is uh, July 2nd and 3rd. And it looks spectacular. I was uh, blessed to have a walkthrough about two weeks mm-hmm. ago and, and saw Doesn't the... Doesn't it look amazing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like the deconstruction. and re- I know. The, the exhibit it, was it, old. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, it was eight-track technology. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Yeah, so it's all that's been updated, state-of-the-art. Uh, but it's the same storytelling. Yeah, yeah. It's just been updated. Well, I like the integration of having native voices uh, create the exhibits. Oh, I and mean, that, that's, that's important. Very um, important. Yeah, and they, they even have a Hispanic influence yeah, section yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering Always. what that's going to be like. <laughs> yeah. Always interesting. <laughs> well, I, I bring this up because yeah. I'd like to encourage our audience to, when you make plans to come to Indian Market this year or in the summer, please come and visit the Museum of Indian Art and Culture mm-hmm. and experience that here in Iowa and always exhibit. Absolutely. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say about the Museum of Indian Art and Culture is it's really a museum for our, for our native peoples. Mm-hmm. And it, it's, it's a great place of preservation. Yeah, and absolutely. Uh, the vaults are full. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are full. They're full, they're full of great uh, prehistoric, historic, yeah. and contemporary works. Yeah. From uh, ceramics to uh, textiles to anything you could think about uh, in the native cultures and even our native peoples I want them to know that this is their museum oh and absolutely they should have pride in in, in sending their friends and coming with their families yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's to that museum major mission of the museum is to connect native communities with their traditions and culture yeah, yeah for sure okay so uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the New Mexico Museum of Art. Oh, nothing happened in there. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Now, the the New Mexico Museum of Art houses um, a huge collection of of historic uh, painters Mm -hmm. and contemporary painters. Yep. And a few years ago, who came up with the idea to separate this? So it really started in 2014 when the museum updated its strategic plan. And it recognized that it needed a stronger presence in contemporary art and that it couldn't do that in the historic building downtown, uh, opened in 1917, over 100 years old. And so it was determined that there would be one museum, two locations, and there happened to be a building in the rail yard that was managed by the Department of Cultural Affairs, the old state archives building. And it was perfectly suited Uh, obviously with some changes uh, to become a contemporary art venue for the Museum of Art. And so eight years later, we're we're about to realize that dream. And what's it called? So it's the Vladim Contemporary. Uh, And so Bob and Ellen Vladim uh, were the lead donors to what we call the Centennial Campaign, uh, which raised $12.5 million toward the construction of the Vladim. And the state uh, kicked in about an additional eight to ten million, so it's about a twenty million dollar project. Uh, all the funding's there; uh, it's under construction. Uh, we're trying to tell them to <laughs> keep Get going. On <laughs> yeah, come on. Well, we had to push the, the opening back a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. So we were intending to open the end of August. Um, so March didn't cooperate with us weather-wise, so we were pouring concrete, and you can't do that very well, and it's below 40 degrees. Uh, And we also had two steel beams that we just couldn't get delivery on. Supply chain. Oh, Mm -hmm. boy, yeah. And I tell you, Bradbury Stam's been incredible. They have done so many workarounds to keep going. Uh, But we haven't gotten the formal word that there will be a delay, but we suspect it. But we think that will move us into a fall opening, but maybe September, October, so not too late. Not too late. So this is another great thing to come to Santa Fe and see this year. Um, This is uh, approximately a 40,000 square foot museum space. Yeah, about 35,000 square feet. Yeah, about 10,000 of new gallery space, incredible uh, new collection storage. Uh, there's an artist studio, an education center. Um, it really, it's it's filling in all the gaps of the old building. Yeah. So, so for those uh, in our audience who you know the Blue Rain Gallery is, uh, Vladim Contemporary is on the same street going yes. north about a block. We're your neighbor. Yeah, we're, we're, we're neighbors, and now we're stuck between Site Santa Fe and, <laughs> yeah, and Vladim right. Contemporary. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, <laughs> well, this is exciting news. So it is. the Vladim Contemporary, where does the line start for the collections as far as the year? Yeah. Is it like the 60s? Yeah, so I've been told um, it's post-World War II for now uh, because we actually have a fairly good collection of post-World War II art. 
uh, and at some point it will come a, become a 30 year rolling period. Uh, I'm not sure when that will kick in, but that's, but there won't be a really strong line of demarcation between the two. They're going to really try to program. So how are you going to, who's, who's deciding that? What, what goes where? So that's really, um, so it is one museum, two locations. So all the museum leadership and curatorial staff will determine programming in both the 1917 building and the Vladim Contemporary. So here's a good question for you yeah. too on that collection. Are they going to include uh, contemporary native art in there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. think that's important. It is. And, and you know, back to Mayak. So we are working on opening a contemporary native art gallery uh, that we think w the design's completed. Is it going to be part of Mayak? It'll be an it'll, extension of it? Yes. Yeah, so when we reconfigured here now in always, it opened up a space that allows for this new gallery. Oh, right. And it's going to be incredible. It may, I mean, right now we're thinking it may open later in the fall, but it will, and um, Tony Abeta is going to curate the first show. Oh, nice. And it, which is wonderful. And so it really will focus on contemporary native artists. So there's going to be a symbiotic relationship between the Museum of New Mexico and the Museum of Indian Art and Culture. And, and I'll give you an idea of that. Virgil Ortiz, mm -hmm. he's our... Mayak Living Treasure for 2022 he has an exhibit going up at Mayak 1st of May. He's going to be featured in the inaugural exhibit called Shadow and Light at Vladim Contemporary. So there's a great example. Oh, that's nice. Really, that, that's wonderful. Isn't that cool? Okay, well, let's talk about, at this point, the uh, Folk Art Museum. What's going on over there? Folk Art. So, um, so we have some great exhibits. We have Yokai, which is... Uh, Japanese ghosts and demons. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very scary. Uh, we've just opened an exhibit on Scandinavian dress that's really incredible. We have Buena Musica, um, folk art music of New Mexico. Uh, and what's really exciting is that we're working on a master plan to reconfigure Moifa and hopefully to expand it. Uh, and uh, it hadn't been a, this hadn't been addressed for many many years, and so we are hoping for the 70th anniversary of Moitha, which will be in September of 2023, to uh, announce this master plan and begin a major fundraising campaign to make it happen. Great. Uh, the folk art also uh, produces a folk art market once a year here, usually in. July. Yep. Yep. And like to encourage uh, people to come visit that. It's really oh, it's fun. Incredible. It's one of the bigger events of Santa Fe. Oh, I, think, I mean, outside of Indian Market and yeah, the Opera, right? Yeah. They get about twenty-two thousand visitors a year. That's yeah, amazing. It's over yeah. over a five-day period. Yeah. There's some great talent in there, and it covers folk art from around the world. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty wonderful. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the the monuments so that we have here in New Mexico yeah. that we're helping preserve. Yeah. So uh, and and let me mention one in particular. Uh, Bosque Redondo Memorial at Fort Sumner Historic Site. So on May 28th, we have a grand opening ceremony for a new permanent exhibit at Bosque Redondo. What which, is, what is, why is that so important, Bosque yeah, Redondo? What is that? So, so this was, I mean, a real tragic uh, story in our country's uh, history, which is in the 1860s, uh, both Mescalero Apache and Navajo tribal members were interned at Bosque Redondo. Uh, you may have heard of the Long Walk, which is a just horrific uh, uh, walking from tribal lands to Bosque Redondo, uh, basically imprisoned there for seven or eight years. Uh, finally, they were allowed to return to their home. They were there for seven or eight years and put in land that oh. you couldn't even grow anything oh, on because oh. the alkaline and the soil. I mean, it was unbelievable. Starvation and all kinds yeah. of things happened. Yeah. You know. Oh, it was horrible. And so, so there were 11 Navajo young people that came to the site over 25 years ago, and they wrote a letter, and they said, you are not telling the true story of Bosque Redondo. And from that point... They've been working on this true exhibit, you know, that tells the true story. And so it's happened. It is fabulous. They had Mescalera Apache and Navajo uh, be involved in, in creating the exhibit along with the Department of Cultural Affairs. It opened in October, but COVID prevented us from having a proper ceremony. So that's happening in May. 
and it's going to be incredible. Oh, nice. So what are some other ones? That yeah. We're so we have uh, Coronado Historic Site in Bernalillo. Um, and it's just been recently determined that Coronado was actually there. Um, we've got Hamas um, Historic Site up at Hamas Springs. We've got uh, down south, uh, Fort Selden, Fort Stanton, Lincoln, uh, which is the most visited historic site. Um, we will soon have um, uh, J. Paul Taylor's home and two storefronts on the Mesilla Plaza that will become an historic site. Uh, we hope not too soon because um, J. Paul Taylor is 101 years old. Oh, wow. <laughs> He'll turn 102 in August. And, of course, we want him to live forever, uh, but he's bequeathed his home and, and these properties to the state to become a historic site. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. So, That's some exciting stuff. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, the sites are amazing. I mean, this is where history actually happened, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're really amazing part of the state yeah. museum system. Well, when I first started on the board, uh, they were fundraising for the history museum mm -hmm. and that was a big thing and oh, you yeah. came in i think right after that <laughs> yeah and that was yep. a that was a big push that was yeah opened in 2009 yeah, yeah. a big deal and one of one of the first or uh, one of the exhibits when maybe what seven years eight years ago was on one of my grandfather's Oh, really? Yeah, really? Bernardo de Mira y Pacheco. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he was the first map maker right. in the Southwest. Wow, I did um, not know this. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And he, was, he also did uh, the first ethnological studies of the tribes along the Rio Right, Bay, right. And was the first one to map a little bit of the, the Colorado as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that was nice. They did an exhibit and a book. But You've kept this from me, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. But um, it, it's a wonderful museum as well. Oh, like yeah. to, and we forgot to cover that in the four, but... Uh, uh, Jamie's done a great job and um, continued success. Oh, now, if people want to donate to yeah. the foundation, where do they go? So they can go to our website, museumfoundation.org, uh, and there is a landing page where they can make a contribution to any of the museums or historic sites or archaeology. Right on. Yep. Well, I would like to encourage people to donate to the Museum Foundation of New Mexico. They're very important. Uh, the money is needed for these exhibits and for, to sustain the museums and monuments. And uh, I'd like to encourage everybody to do so. Thank you. Thank you for coming in today, oh, Jamie. Oh, my greatest pleasure. Great to see you, Leroy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching. Please uh, subscribe to us on all the platforms, including uh, YouTube and uh, iTunes, uh, and any other platform you can think of, uh, as well as our website, BlueRainGallery.com. I'd like to encourage everybody to bring art with you into your everyday life by going to BlueRainGallery.com. Thanks, Jamie. Take care. <laughs>